Hi, Brad here, W0BHA. I had a few people ask how my uh, GMRS repeater here at, uh, here at home is set up. And I thought I'd just kind of take a quick uh, quick run through of the, the setup because it's rather interesting. It's not your, your, your standard GMRS repeater. Uh, bear with me on the audio and video. I'm just using my little JVC camcorder here. Got everything in a just in a little closet here. Just a small. I think that was actually supposed to be a wall mount rack, uh, sitting on an end table. Uh, not only do we have the GMRS repeater, which is in the rack, but we also have the computers and scanners uh, for uh, streaming to radio reference and to live ATC. So we'll just start from the bottom here. Uh, there's a uh, there's a switch and a computer actually sitting on top of the switch. Uh, two scanners here. Uh, that one is... Focus. Well, the camera's not going to focus, but that's uh, that one's uh, Moswin, uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol. Uh, this one here is aircraft. Uh, that's going to live ATC. There's three computers. Yes, I know you can run uh, more than one scanner on a computer, but I've had nothing but trouble when I've tried to do that, so I just got some cheap, uh, what are these things, little Optiplexes off of eBay. I think they were like 40 bucks a piece. Uh, run Windows 7, maybe a gig of RAM each. They, they do okay, and they, they solve a lot of problems just using multiple computers. Uh, up here, uh, the big, uh, uh, what is this, 890, the big 895, this is uh, City of Columbia PD, Columbia Police Department. This one is Columbia and Boone County Fire and EMS. And again, the, uh, the scanner, or the computers are down below here. The Moswin scanner and the Fire and EMS scanner have alpha tagging. The other two are only two channels, so I don't alpha tag them. Uh, the scope is there because I was doing some level testing. Uh, yeah, I really need uh, better airflow, but this was a... This started out as an incinerator closet. That was an incinerator chute. Now we just use it for uh, basically a cable raceway. Another switch and some various crap up here. And we've got power supplies. That is our building management system interface for temperature. And uh, there is a magnetic switch for the door. Uh, I've got that disabled, otherwise you would have heard my phone go off when I opened the door. Backup power. And a power injector for Wi-Fi in the other room. Okay. Let's get to the, the repeater here. This is a completely custom built system, just built on parts off eBay. Uh, but the only thing that isn't custom is the controller. Uh, it's an ACC uh, RC96. Okay, we've got a GE voter. This is the really nice GE uh, SN voter. Uh, we have three receivers. I've got room for six, but I'm only using three at the moment. We've got one on the ground floor. These are the receivers are SM50s. So I'll show you those in a minute. And one on the third floor east, which is actually right below this room. And then we've got one on the roof. The, uh, the radio is actually right here. Right there. Uh, but the antenna is on the roof. About oh, 50 feet above me, I'd say. Uh, back there, you can just barely see it, is a power supply for these radios in here and the voter. Uh, it's a power strip for the AC stuff in here. ACC uh, RC96 controller, which actually replaced this uh, MCC uh, RC1000. We had nothing but trouble with this thing, so I just got rid of it. Okay, uh, we've got the receiver voter uh, goes to the controller. Uh, this radio right here is a 25 watt UHF Max Track, Motorola Max Track. Uh, duty cycle on this system is about 1%. Uh, 
so I mean it's transmitting two or three minutes at a time with an hour between so uh, heat has never been an issue uh, as you saw there and you see the flashing of zeros this radio right here underneath the SM50 that's actually another city fire uh, receiver it's a uh, 32 channel VHF max track and it's connected to the link port uh, on the ACC so that I can turn it on and we can listen to City Fire uh, over the repeater if we have to. Say if I'm working down in a machine room uh, where I can't pick up VHF, I can put that on. That's going to go away soon. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, and right there is the, that's the VHF antenna. This duplexer here is not used. I went with separate antennas after trying that for about a week and found out that it really didn't work. Uh, don't waste your money on these cheap ass Chinese duplexers. They're nothing but trouble. And I've got the proper equipment to tune them. I don't even want to think about it if you didn't have the proper service monitor and everything to tune them. Okay, we'll go find a uh, receiver. Uh, we'll go down to the ground floor. That one's easier to get to. Okay, forgive the audio, I'm now in a machine room. Uh, here is the radio for the ground floor. This is a Motorola SM50, two-channel UHF. Uh, both channels programmed exactly the same. Just so if somebody were to hit one of those channel buttons, we don't end up with a problem. Just a little BNC antenna plugged into an adapter. The cable here just comes to a little terminal block. Uh, that gives me 12-volt uh, power, audio, and COS uh, up to the repeater voter. And it just goes on upstairs. There's one of these here, there's one on the third floor, and then there's the one in the cabinet that has the antenna on the roof. Okay, now that I'm out of the elevator room and can hear, uh, as far as the user radios, uh, since this is used for maintenance of an apartment building, uh, the maintenance guys all carry Baofeng uh, BF888s, cheap Chinese $13 radios. They put out maybe a watt and a half, but they work fine on this system because they're right in close to it. Uh, it wasn't so well before we put in the voter and the extra receivers, but it works pretty well now. The rationale behind that is the guys beat the hell out of the radios and better to destroy a $13 radio than a $300 radio. So we had, uh, what were they? They were BPR-40s, Motorola BPR-40s. $300 radios, they didn't last more than a year. So when we went to replace those, we went with the Baofengs because they're cheap. We can get them dirt cheap on Amazon and the guys can tear the hell out of them and it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the, there is a Motorola desk track in the office. Uh, the manager tends to, uh, he carries a BF888, but if, if somebody's in the office they can use the desk track. Uh, here in the chiller room we've got another uh, SM50. That's probably going to go away soon, but it works for now. And the rationale behind this is when the old chiller was running, it was so noisy in here, you couldn't hear your handheld. Uh, so we would, we would turn the uh, SM50 all the way up and you could hear it. Uh, I carry uh, either an HT1000, which is what this one is, or an MT2000. I've been known to carry a Sabre. I... I love my Motorola commercial radios, what can I say? And uh, I carry that just because I don't mind carrying a brick. Uh, the, the guys wouldn't want to walk around the building uh, carrying bricks. We, uh, we discussed that before because I had, had contemplated uh, moving everybody to uh, HT-1000s. Uh, you, you, can, you can beat up a Jedi. Uh, radio, what can I say? They they take an awful lot, and they just the the, uh, the Baofengs are okay, but the main thing, the issue I have is they don't have PTT ID. So when somebody starts screwing around with the radio, I can't tell who it is, and 
when I have to yell at somebody for screwing around with the radio, it'd be really nice to know who it is. Okay, just because I can uh, show you the antennas here. Uh, this is the closet uh, just above the repeater closet. Uh, there's the hatch. Uh, here is the transmit antenna, and it's a 300 ohm wire lead J pole inside a piece of PVC. Uh, I bought. I actually bought it off eBay. I bought the the J pole, and then the caps came with it, and put it inside a piece of PVC. Uh, just PL259 there. This is uh, fairly cheap RG8, but it works. Uh, it's only 10 feet long. The the repeaters <laughs> right down there. Uh, and then bear with me here. It's really cold outside, so I'm going to make this quick. Show you the uh, the transmitter. Or the receive antennas. Let's see if I can do this. All right, right up there. You can see the white stick there on the other side. That is the receive antenna for the roof receiver. Then there's the scanner antenna. You can see the uh, radios coming off of it. And then that stick right there next to the scanner antenna, the dark colored stick there. That is for my uh, ADSB receiver. Uh, so they're go 45 feet above ground level, I'd say. Okay, I had to get back inside because it's really cold out. I think it's 19 degrees. All right, really piss poor video, but I hope that uh, answers some questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment, and I'll do my best to answer them. 73s.